Hello, my name is Bhavan Shah and welcome to another Portworx demo. In this demo, we look at two scenarios for application migration across Kubernetes cluster. The first scenario is where we'll, we are running our source and destination clusters for our migration demo inside the same data center. The source cluster is a vanilla or open source Kubernetes cluster and our destination is an Amazon EKS Anywhere cluster running on virtual machines on our VMware vSphere environment. The in the first scenario, we'll treat these source and destination clusters and we have a demo application running on our source cluster. To migrate this application, we create a cl cluster pair object between our source and destination. Once the cluster pair object is up and running, we can define a migration specification using a YAML file and customize the parameters for our migration operation. Once we apply this migration file against our source cluster, Portwox will initiate an application migration for a specific namespace from the source to the destination cluster and copy not just persistent volume claims or persistent volumes, but also all the Kubernetes objects and application configuration that's running on our source cluster. Once the migration is done successfully, you will have an exact replica of your application running on your second destination or Amazon EKS anywhere cluster. So that's the first scenario where both of my clusters are running on prem. As uh, 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 as the second scenario for this demo, we look at uh, a hybrid cloud application migration topology where we still have the vanilla or open source Kubernetes cluster running on prem. But in this case, our destination cluster is an Amazon EKS cluster running in US East one. We follow a similar workflow to set up this application migration topology. The first step is configuring a cluster pair object between our source cluster and our destination cluster. And once the cluster pair object is up and running, we then create a migration specification applied against our source cluster for a specific namespace and copy not just the persistent volumes, but all of our different components over to the destination site. You can define uh, things like include resources where we make sure that it copies everything whether uh, as true. We also set a second variable called start applications as true to make sure that once the application components are copied over, uh, we do deploy those application pods or application can come online. You can customize the migration YAML file based on your use case, but we look at how Portworx can help you with these application migrations across these different Kubernetes clusters, maybe running different Kubernetes versions and across Kubernetes clusters running even different Kubernetes distributions across different cloud environments. So let's see this in action. For the first scenario, we have our vanilla Kubernetes cluster on the top and our EKS Anywhere cluster on the bottom. Both of these clusters have one, work, uh, one master and three worker nodes set up running versions 1.23 on the source side and 1.21 on the destination side. Both of these clusters have Portwox Enterprise deployed and configured. So if you look at kubectl get pods in the kube system namespace, you will see all the different Portwox components. And if you exec into one of the Portwox pod, we can run a simple pixie cuttle status command to look at the status of our Portwork storage cluster and uh, whether all of our worker nodes in the Kubernetes cluster are contributing storage and are online uh, as part of our Portwork storage cluster. So you can get those higher level of details from a simple pixie cuttle status command from any one of our Portwork pods. Let's do the same thing on our destination cluster as well, which is our Amazon EKS Anywhere cluster. It, uh, again, we have already deployed Portwox as the baseline on the destination side as well. If we exec into one of the Portwox pods, let, uh, we can run the pixie cuttle status command and get a good overview of the destination cluster as well. So Portwox is operational and we have three worker nodes contributing storage to our uh, storage pool. Now let's look at the demo application that we have running for this migration demo. Uh, all the different components as part of our distributed application are running in the demo namespace. You will see that we have a deployment object, a couple of persistent volume claims and a Postgres pod. This Postgres pod has a couple of containers. One is the Postgres container and the second one is the pgbench container that has generated some databases for us. The first step is creating a, migra a cluster pair object uh, for between our source and destination. Here we can specify the right namespace, the different options that are needed from a destination cluster perspective like the IP port and the cluster token. 
Once your cluster pair specification looks good, you can go ahead and apply it using kubectl apply. And then once it's deployed, you can monitor the status using stork ctl get cluster pair in the demo namespace. Our storage status and scheduler status are ready, so we can proceed with the migration YAML file. Here we can give the migration object a name. We can point it to the demo namespace. We can point it to the correct cluster pair object. And then we can customize additional parameters like include resources, start applications, purge deleted resources. And then these are just the ones that I have used. There are additional variables you can find in our uh, Portworx documentation, like an admin namespace that controls, uh, that allows you to migrate different namespaces at the same time. Once the migration uh, file is uh, looking good, we can uh, apply it using kubectl apply command. And you can monitor your migration objects using uh, one of three commands. You can either use stork ctl get migrations and it gives you a good stage and status of, the, of your migration. You can do a kubectl get migrations or you can also do a kubectl describe migrations in the demo namespace to look at uh, how or which components are being migrated right now. So here you can see we have two persistent volumes being migrated right now and our pgbench data has a few bytes already being transferred to the secondary side. We can monitor these migrations using a simple stork ctl get migrations for the demo namespace command. We're using a flag dash w at the end. So once this is up and running, let's go to the destination site and issue a watch command there as well. So let's do a watch on the kubectl get all in the demo namespace. So as soon as our migration is done, the resources will start getting deployed on our destination cluster. Both of these clusters are running on the same VMware vSphere environment. So the uh, uh, migration shouldn't take a lot of time. And this is all happening in real time. So you can see that we have uh, close to three minutes that has passed and our migration is looking good. Uh, so it, it took two minutes, 56 seconds for it to copy two volumes and five Kubernetes resources from the source to the destination site. Let's verify that everything got migrated successfully. So on the destination side, we can do a kubectl get all, kubectl get pvc, and we see all the same objects. But uh, when we migrate a Postgres instance, let's verify that all the databases that were configured inside our Postgres instance also made it to the destination side. So let's do this. Let's exec into the Postgres pod on our source cluster and log in using our psql, uh, psql command using pgbench user and do a slash l for our different databases configured on the source side. We have 50 rows, that means we have close to 50 databases configured. Let's do the same thing and on the destination site and validate that all of those databases did make it make their way to the destination cluster. So we'll exec into the new Postgres pod on the destination site log in using the same user because the application configuration should be copied as part of the migration. And if we do a slash L, we see that, okay, all the 50 rows or 50 databases show up on the destination cluster as well. So this is how easy it is to perform a migration, even when the two clusters, the source and destination are running different versions of Kubernetes and different distributions of Kubernetes. Uh, in this scenario, this was the first scenario where everything was running on-prem. In the second scenario, we'll switch things up a bit. Our source cluster will still remain on-prem running vanilla Kubernetes, but our destination cluster will be running in Amazon public cloud in the US East one region and leveraging Amazon EKS. So let's switch over to that scenario and look at what our source and destination clusters look like uh, for, for the second scenario. So here we have our destination cluster, which is an Amazon EKS cluster. And again, this EKS cluster is a six worker node cluster uh, running in US East one, but only three of those worker nodes are configured as storage nodes. So you can see all six have been active. They are running another version of Kubernetes as 1.20 and Portworx is already installed and configured on them. We can exec into one of the Portworx pods to get a status of our Portworx storage cluster. So let's do that uh, and uh, use our pixie cuttle status command to get an overview of our Portworx cluster. You can see Portworx is operational and three of the six nodes are, are configured as storage nodes and the other three are just providing compute to the cluster for our applications to use. Now let's go back to our vanilla Kubernetes cluster. Here uh, we are, uh, let's just confirm that uh, all the nodes are still up and running. So let's do a kubectl get nodes 
all the nodes are ready state running version 1.23 for kubernetes let's verify that all of our port works pods are also up and running so a kubectl get pods in the kube system namespace looks good as well let's exec into one of the port works pod and make sure that our port works storage cluster is also up and running uh, as well so let's exec into it and then use the pixie cuttle status command here you can see portworks is operational and we have three storage nodes configured as part of our vanilla kubernetes cluster running on prem from a demo application perspective we have the same app running uh, in this in this second scenario it's a simple postgres deployment uh, with two persistent volume claims backing the postgres database we have inside the postgres pod we have the postgres container and the pg bench container which have gen which has generated those 50 databases for us so uh, we can uh, log in and or we can exec into the postgres pod running in the demo namespace and verify that all of those databases exist so when we check on the destination site we know we look uh, everything got migrated uh, over from the source to destination so here we have 50 rows 50 databases everything is good to go let's exit out of this and let's proceed to the first step of migration which is to create a cluster pair object between our source and destination sites a cluster pair object or a cluster pair specification is generated on the destination site but it's actually applied to our source cluster so uh, the yaml file that we are looking we look at uh, is generated on the destination eks cluster but actually applied against our source cluster so we'll uh, uh, look into it and make sure that we have the correct namespace configured and correct options selected as well. So the IP address, the port number, the cluster token represent the correct uh, destination cluster, which is running in Amazon EKS. Once your cluster pair YAML file looks good, you can exit out of it and apply it against your source cluster by using a simple kubectl apply the name of the YAML file command in the demo namespace. Once you have applied the cluster pair YAML file, uh, you can monitor the status of your cluster pair using stork CTL get cluster pair in the demo namespace and verify that your storage status and scheduler status are ready to go. Next, well, now that our cluster pair is created, the next step is to create a migration YAML file. And again, similar to the first scenario, we'll just make sure that all of our different parameters look good for our migration operation. So we give it a unique name we point it to the same namespace, which is demo in our case, and then we select the correct uh, cluster pair. So OSS hyphen EKS, not OSS hyphen EKS A. We set the other parameters based on uh, the migration that we want to do. And once we are happy with all of these customizations, we can exit out of it and then apply the migration YAML file. So here start applications true flag is important because this is a one time migration operation and we want our applications to come online. Let's go ahead and apply the YAML file and you can monitor the st status of the migration using stork CTL get migrations for the demo namespace. And this will give you the stage and the state uh, of your migration like stages, volumes and statuses in progress. So it's migrating our volumes right now between on-prem and the public cloud. This migration operation, uh, the time it takes depends on the bandwidth that's available between your on-prem and public cloud environment. Uh, Portworx supports either using an IPsec VPN tunnel to connect your on-prem and cloud clusters, or it supports a direct connection from between your on-prem and public cloud environments as well so to make sure that any data that's migrated is migrated over a secure connection. Let's do a watch command on both the source and destination and monitor our migration operation. As you can see, one of our volumes are already, is already been migrated over. On the destination side, let's do a watch command for all resources. So as soon as the volumes are done, we'll start spinning up those Kubernetes objects. So you'll start seeing those deployments, pods and replica set objects show up. Uh, Again, going back to the point where this is a one-time migration, you can also use our asynchronous DR capabilities and have a migration schedule that moves these components at a specified interval in time. But for this one-time operation, which might be in, uh, interesting in like a test dev scenario where you have your test dev running on-prem and your production is running in the cloud, you can use Portworks to migrate your applications when they are ready from test dev and promote them to a production environment. Our migration has been successful. Uh, both the volumes and all five resources have been copied over and it took close to five minutes because we were going across on-prem to public cloud. 
and let's just make sure on our destination cluster everything looks good so let's do a kubectl get all in the demo namespace uh, let's make sure our persistent volumes are also configured correctly so we see 10 gig and 1 gig for the pg bench data and pg bench state and then let's exec into the postgres pod and verify that all that 50 databases that we saw on the source side also show up on the destination side so we can do a simple exec command and then use uh, a psql utility and log in as the pg bench user uh, use the slash l command here and we can see all the different databases uh, that were at the source site got successfully copied over to the destination site as well. So this is how easy it is to leverage Portworx to achieve application migration, not just across different Kubernetes clusters, but across different cloud environments and different Kubernetes distributions and different Kubernetes versions. Portworx can be that single tool that can help you with this application migration and application portability across your Kubernetes clusters. That's it for this demo. Thanks for watching.